welcome back to another edition of the Orlando Solar Bears podcast. I'm Jesse Liebman, uh, joined today by Solar Bears forwards Jake Kugler and Tyler Bird. Guys, uh, thanks for joining me here this afternoon. Yeah, thanks for having, having us today. Us. Yeah, appreciate it. So we got a lot to, to dive into uh, in particular. Sometimes we it's light on the hockey. Sometimes it's pretty heavy. This is going to be one of those heavier episodes because what a weekend. Uh, Solar Bears with three straight in three days. Friday and Saturday wins over Norfolk. Sunday afternoon, I get a win over Atlanta. And now the Solar Bears are past Greenville into third place in the South Division. It's been a couple of months since they were that high within the division. Um, f- let's jump right into it. Friday night, uh, 4 nothing win for the Solar Bears over the Admirals. Uh, what did you guys see out of that game that, that led to the win? Yeah, I think uh, we came out humming that game. Like, like first 10 minutes, I think the shots were like 10-2 to two or something like that, and we just – um, got off to an early lead and just kept it going the entire game. So um, that was a really good start, and uh, I think we played really well that game. It kind of set the tone for the weekend. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we kind of wanted to focus on our style of play. we kind of been drifting away from it for a little bit the last few games and finally seemed to figure it out, and it was a good morale win for us for sure. Of course, the big game of the week was on Saturday. Uh, that one probably had more of its shares of ups and downs than – People might have expected after Friday night's performance, I think a lot of fans heading into the building were expecting packed crowd, game on TV here on News 6. Uh, and after Friday, it, it should be a cakewalk, but I think that's maybe the, the misconception of this division. It, no game is going to be easy, and there are no nights off because it was good. I mean, you were carrying the team offensively through the first period with two goals, uh, and then the Admirals scored four and, and took a 4-2 lead. And then Mike Brodzinski decided to step things up in a big way in the last minute. Two goals, power play, uh, with the goaltender pulled. And then Taylor Camerata winging in overtime. I mean, just walk us through all of those ups and downs because I I think that was uh, the best way to describe it would be an emotional roller coaster. That's the perfect way to describe it, I think. And, you know, it's funny you say that because it was one of the things that that, uh, Drake said before the game was, you know, we got the first one, but don't take these guys lightly because it's happened before where, you know, they come back the next night and, and they've clobbered us. So uh, it was something that, you know, we wanted to make sure that we got both wins. And um, to go up early like that, obviously the boys are feeling real high, like you said. And then uh, they come back and score four. And you're right, it's, it's there's no other way to describe it than just an emotional roller coaster. They had the highest of the highs and pretty low, you know, you go down by – you go four unanswered, and then it's just that that third period was insane, for sure. Yeah, it was uh, that was crazy, honestly. That's probably one of the crazier games I've been a part of, like especially in the end. Um, I don't know, it was weird. Just like I looked up, and it's like it's four to two or something like that. And I was, and I think in the after the second period, we're like, all right, let's just have a good period of hockey and see what happens. And I think we threw like twenty five shots at the net or something. And I think we all knew, like, let's just keep going. We'll see. And I, I couldn't believe it, like that we scored those two goals. So. Um, it was pretty unreal. That was a good one. What was said in, in two things. So what was said in the locker room heading into the third period? Because at that point you're down two. Was it everyone somber? Were, were were guys still very much focused, or what was the mood like? It was kind of just. It was really quiet. I mean, a few guys spoke up and said, you know, we know what we need to do. You know, keep your game simple. Everybody do their job, and that's just what we did. I mean. You know, we we got a little bit fancy in that second period, and and they completely took over. You know, we, we didn't play our style of game, and once we got right back to it, I mean, we started like Birdie said, we threw up like twenty five shots or something like that, and um, yeah, we just hemmed them in, and I mean, Brodzy potting those two is just that building was electric. It was insane, so it was good. You know, I, I hate to say it because it's a cliche, but these cliches exist for reasons because more often than not, they're true ninety nine percent of the time, but. Uh, with hockey being a game of just very small, finite, detailed bounces, and it, the the bounces that the Solar Bears got in the final two minutes of regulation with Norfolk taking back-to-back penalties, I, I can't think of the last time I've seen a player cover the puck in the, in the slot and just fall completely on top of it, <laughs> but that's exactly what Jake Reichert of the Admirals did, and put Orlando in a five-on-three power play, and then, of course, you th- you pull the goaltender. By that point, Clinton Windsor had uh, come on in relief of Mike Condon uh, and had finished the night with 11 saves, making all the saves required of him. Uh, but to have that opportunity to call a timeout, 
Jared Stahl breaking out the clipboard on the on the bench and what structure wise what what's that like when you're set to play a six on three to to start that power play? First of all, that play is just. You're it's, not going to see it 99. No, no, exactly, yeah. exactly. And <laughs> how know, can you plan for it? Exactly, and I mean, you know, the boys were up pretty quick when we scored those two on the power play, but the boys were up just as quick as soon as he was on that puck and yelling delay a game. Like at that point, I think we got obviously we got a little extra life. I mean, we're we're six on four for or six on three for the rest of the game, and yeah, it's just when Stalzi's breaking up the clipboard, everyone's just sorting it out, and you're almost calm in a sense that like you know you believe that it's going to happen. And um, we had two great draw wins and, uh, you know, just got the puck back to Brodsey. I had one shot, I think, uh, a one-timer off of it, and goalie made a great save. It kind of just stuck in his arm a little bit. Um, but, yeah, and then Brodsey sifted those ones through, and it was just – there's no, there's no way to describe it. We were just like kids on the ice. No, there are some guys on the team that can hammer the puck uh, from the blue line. I think of Rich Boyd and and Cody Donahue in particular. But both goals from Broads, both soft little wristers that mm. found a way through through traffic. Through I think the second goal did deflect off of a, a Admiral's defenseman and into the net. Um, but just what what are you guys like seeing on the bench or on the ice when those goals are scored? Where you have a, a small uh, a wrister. You would think that a goalie might be able to anticipate that a little bit better than than the uh, one time or a slap shot. Yeah, the first one it was kind of like you said, just just a little soft wrister. Um, from my perspective, I'm kind of on my one T side on the left side, so I see that soft shot and I'm skating towards the net. It goes in. We're ecstatic right away. And then the second one was probably one of the weirdest goals I've ever seen. It, it looked like the goalie was coming across to play me for my one-timer and he wasn't even in the net and the puck was in the right side of the net and he was completely on the left side so I mean we were talking about it after like where was he going but I mean that's just the mounts you need right that's that's fantastic so yeah I think uh I think if you watch especially in the first one like Ole in front of the net just completely like the goalie couldn't see a thing you know he's taking his eyes away and he's a big body so that was really important he's good at that so I think it's just something that <clears throat> Draker's always preaching to us you know getting in front of that and taking the goalie's eyes away and it doesn't always have to be the hardest shot if you can't see it right so yeah I think it was all the more impressive that and again we haven't even gotten to Sunday's game but the fact that <clears throat> the Solar Bears got through all three of these games you talk about a player like Trevor Olsen you yourself also a pretty big guy that occupies a lot of space in front of the net, creating traffic, creating screens. Uh, but without Chris LeBlanc for all three games last week, uh, and certainly we know what he's capable of and all of the on-ice situations that the coaching staff deploys him, penalty, kill, power play, even strength, um, how big of a, of a step up that a lot of the, the players on the, rosters, on the roster had to make uh, with his absence? Yeah, I think it was huge. I mean, like, I think some guys are playing in some positions that they're probably not used to and playing a little more than uh, usual. Um, like, obviously, Chris, he's huge for us. He's so important. He plays in every situation. So um, I think it says a lot about the the guys in the room, though, able to step up when uh, when they need him and play a bigger role than they might not usually have. So it was huge. Yeah, I think that's the perfect way to say it. I mean, um, we've also been short a lot lately with, uh, with guys in the roster. I mean, we've got some guys playing – some defensemen playing forward you know uh Richie Boyd's been up with us a few times in the lines and uh and Chartsy as well but uh, yeah you said it perfect I mean guys are just stepping up and that's huge for morale and the team as well because you know you might count us out in, the, in a situation like that being short and things like that but um we did real well this weekend and we're looking to build off it Sunday of course uh, the Solar Bears cap the weekend with a, a 5-2 win over Atlanta and again, back-to-back games, Saturday night and into Sunday afternoon, uh, down at the end of two periods of play. And in both games, somehow, some way, uh, the Solar Bears managed to reel off a couple of goals. And in this case on Sunday, coming away with a regulation win. Uh, how were you guys able to build off of Saturday's performance? You're probably at that point gassed. I mean, the, the game ran a little bit later than I think most people anticipated. A TV game, so lengthier intermissions, uh, more more stoppages in play uh, and factor that in with overtime and just the adrenaline that you're running off of at that point how exhausted were you guys Sunday oh gassed absolutely gassed I mean in warm-ups I mean for myself I was kind of fighting it and I was going a little extra harder in warm-ups get the legs going but um, in a situation like that I think you know 
the more exhausted you are, the more simple you have to be. And that's kind of what, what Drake preached um, is simplicity in our game and being predictable to one another. Um, at that point, you know, you just have to read off one another. Like I said, be predictable. Um, but yeah, you're, there's a lot of chipped in pucks in that Sunday game for sure. And, uh, yeah, you just, we rely on, on everybody to, to pull their weight in a, in a situation like that. Yeah, definitely. I think, I think mentally we were really good that game too. You know, after the second period down a goal and it just felt like we're like, all right, whatever we've been here before and Mm -hmm. we're just going to play the right way. And, uh, if we play the right way, then we're going to score some goals and win. And that's exactly what happened. I think I thought it was perfect. I really liked the the way the rim was that day. I got to ask you guys though. So Friday and Sunday, Dylan Fitz, uh, big player, uh, as a rookie last year for the solar bears this year, the offense maybe hasn't come at the same frequency, uh, that fans had come to expect, but two, in both games, really pretty goals. I got to say, Friday night pokes the puck through defenseman's legs, grabs it on the uh, around and beats the goaltender, and then a breakaway head fake uh, deke to score on Sunday afternoon against Atlanta. How fired up were the guys for him on the bench? Ecstatic. I mean, Dill dug in the bag of tricks for those two goals for sure. Uh, dusted the mitts off a little bit, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, those are stellar goals for for any player and. Um, yeah, the boys are the boys are up and really energetic for that one, and that's that's another thing too. It's it's huge for the energy on the bench, you know. It's with uh with Dill scoring those goals, and um, the boys are just you have that extra excitement, and, and it really brings the morale up on the bench for sure. Yeah, it was awesome. Like seeing Dill, I, that was those are unreal, <laughs> unbelievable goals. Uh, I don't want him to hear too much of it. Don't want to <laughs> yeah. let it get to his head. Yeah, uh, we yeah, can, we can't be pumping tires yeah. like that. But, uh, but no, that was uh, that was great fires the boys up and that was a huge goal against Atlanta too I think it kind yeah, of put, it was put a the dagger. game away you yeah know? it was the dagger for sure well speaking of firing guys up uh, on the bench I can't think of a better example beyond goal scoring than what we saw out of Taylor Thompson and Trevor Olson both this weekend uh, Thompson with a fight with Austin McEnany on Friday and then Olson dropping the gloves on Saturday night and for, in Olson's case that came at a time where the Solar Bears were trailing they had already pulled uh, and replace their starting netminder, Mike Condon, with Clint Windsor. Uh, when you see something like that, how do you guys feed off of that? Yeah, it's huge. <clears throat> like, with Ole, Ole always plays the right way, so he's always kind of keeping the boys up and stuff like that, but um, just shows again that he can do it all kind of thing. And um, we were in a position where we needed something. We needed a little spark, and uh, that's exactly what he did, and he pulled through with a great fight. And then, uh, obviously, Tomer um that was just an unreal fight like he was they were pumping each other and uh, i got exhausted really looking at it yeah i, I, I was, was like yeah. i was getting fired up on the ice like i was ready to fight someone after that <laughs> it was but that was awesome yeah, it was good to see yeah no it's uh in Oli's case i think uh he was kind of sticking up for me in a sense guy kind of gave me a good shot in front of the net and i almost whacked my head off the post but uh no it was i obviously gave him a good tap on the shin pad for for coming in for me there and and it's a perfect time to do so like you said like the boys are down and um, I think it definitely took some some momentum from them and and put it in our direction and yeah, Thumper's fight is just it's great and he said um, in the room between periods that uh, Buddy was kind of egging him on and and then when it came time to drop, he didn't want to and once they get out of the box, they decided to throw him and right at center ice, you can't get a better spot in the rink so everybody in the whole rink, I think they got their money's worth that night. Yeah, definitely. Sure. Yeah. definitely. Well, yeah. f- for a, a game like. Saturday night, uh, I hate to beat a dead horse, because I mentioned it already, but in this division, it seems like you cannot take a night off. The the Admirals, they, entering this weekend, had, this past weekend, had given the Solar Bears some troubles at times this season. I think Friday was the first home win against Norfolk this year. Uh, to get two back-to-back certainly helps things, And uh, but... You you look at a team like South Carolina. Orlando's gotten some wins against the Stingrays this year, but I think it's it's very clear that they're probably the team to beat in the in the division, at maybe even the league altogether. Um, but Norfolk's gotten three wins against South Carolina this year. It seems like it's rock paper scissors. Take take your pick. Any day of the week, any team can go toe to toe with another one, regardless of what where they are in the standings. Yeah, it's a it's a, probably one of the hardest divisions in the league. I think um, you know, like you said, you just have to be prepared every single night because. You know, you don't know what it's, what's going to happen. There's no easy team in our division where you can think, oh, you know, I might take it easy tonight and save myself for Saturday. There's there's none of that here. And that's why um, with our scheduling, you know, three and threes are real tough because you're going to work every single night. You're battling every night. And, um, yeah, it's just 
it's a tough division. There's no other way to put it. Yeah, I think Drager said it best too. Like teams like Norfolk are always dangerous because you know they're really just not playing for much because they're they're kind of out of it. But so they're just gonna send guys and get up in the rush offensively. So like from that aspect too, it's really hard. And I think you saw that on Saturday night especially. It was just like oh my goodness, it felt like they had five guys in the rush all the time. So um, games like that can just always be really hard. Well, we've got a couple of games coming up this week. Solar Bears heading out on the road uh, beginning Wednesday. They head down to Estero, then up to Atlanta for a Friday rematch Saturday in Jacksonville, back home against Norfolk on Sunday. Um, at the end of Sunday's game, as the horn sounded, it got a little interesting, though. Uh, what exactly transpired there is uh, the Solar Bears were preparing to celebrate at center ice, as they always do after a, a home win, uh, but... Something seems to kind of develop. I didn't happen to see what exactly sparked it off. Was it just tempers getting the best of, of Atlanta and Orlando, or, or what What did you guys see out there? From what I saw, um, Drap kind of ended the period with the puck, and Buddy took a late run at him. And, I mean, you're down 5-2. You're down you know, you, you can't be doing that at the end of the game. Um, I didn't catch the initial scuffle because I was with Clint at the, at the crease, but um, from what I – from what I heard, it was Buddy taking a late run at Draps and then Ole coming in to kind of say, hey, you know, get enough's out of here. Enough's enough. Exactly. And I'm going to be honest with you, the guy that was in the scruff, I, I hadn't seen him all night. I think that was his first shift of the game, to be honest. So yeah. the boys were kind of giving him giving him the business about that. But, uh, yeah, it's, at that point, you just you got to let him go. Yeah, I don't know. It was just like I don't know what the guy was doing. Uh but yeah, throwing kind of elbows at drafts at the end of the game and kind of unnecessary. Yeah, de- yeah, definitely unnecessary. You know, game's over. But um, whatever. We'll see him. We'll see him this weekend. So it's yeah. fine. Think that'll carry over, or by that point, you guys will probably have played a few games. I'm sure Atlanta's got a couple of games before then. So yeah, I'm sure it, it might carry over. We're, we're we'll be focused. You know, yeah. we we know what the task at hand and stay out of it. And um, I think we're good at that stuff. You know, keeping uh keeping them out there and you know not getting into extra stuff that we don't need to. Two more things hockey focused that I want to go into, kind of leapfrogging all around this weekend's, this past weekend's games. But uh, obviously Saturday night with the overtime winner, uh, Taylor Camerata getting the the OT winner. I think it's his third game winner since uh, he got picked up last month. So I mean, just what has he brought to the club? Yeah, uh, a lot of skill. This weekend was my first time playing with him actually on a line, so that was really nice. And he just a lot of skill, really good with the puck and. I, you know, I kind of learned you always got to be ready for it because you can find you in spots where you don't think you're going to get it. Uh, so just super skilled offensively, and uh, he's been a really nice addition for us, definitely. Yeah, and, you know, he's not the biggest guy. He'll be the first one to admit that, but he's fantastic at just drawing guys to him and, and getting one of our players open. You know, he'll suck two guys to him and then sift it through, and like Birdie said, you don't even think you're getting the puck, and then all of a sudden it's on your tape. And, um, you know, not only that, he's – he does the right things. He blocks shots. He'll get in the corner, and he's just been a great asset for us, you know, in the room and on the ice. And um, yeah, we're really happy to have him. Well, the the big news after you know all the the wins that piled up this weekend on earlier this this week, it was announced Zachary Fucali uh, choosing to continue his playing career overseas in Germany. Uh, he for and Clint Windsor for much of the first half of the season, two thirds of the season, have been a pretty effective one-two punch in goal. Um, right now, as it stands, the goaltending situation for the Solar Bears is Windsor and, and Mike Condon, who is uh, looking to uh, on an NHL contract with the Tampa Bay Lightning, acquired from Ottawa during the offseason. He's looking to rediscover, I guess, his game, uh, if you will, and get back to playing at that high level. Uh, for the foreseeable future, you know, all things being what they are, uh, where do you guys feel the the goaltending situation is going forward? I mean, I'm pretty confident in it. Um, I was confident with Fuchs and and uh, Clinty for sure. Um, you know, good for Fuchs on on getting that opportunity, and um, I think he deserves it. He's got a pretty good resume over there already, as he's played three Spanger Cups and uh, just won the last one. So. Uh, wish him nothing but the best obviously he was he was my roommate as well so um, but yeah no definitely confident I mean Clint's been hot as we've seen and Kondo is just working he's working hard every day you know Um, like you said he's trying to rediscover his game and coming off an injury is always tough you know you don't want to it's always in the back of your mind you know I don't want to do it again and things like that so um, he's been great I mean he's he's hard to score on in practice and he's just doing the little things right every day so I'm pretty confident in our duo for sure I think the one thing that that struck out to that stuck out to me Saturday night after the game we had Michael Brodzinski with the the two 
goals in the third period, really saving that game for Orlando. Uh, but he was quick to point out almost immediately that he had felt that the team had at, at times let Condon down during the uh, second period in particular. Um, it it seems like he's been a pretty welcome addition within the locker room itself, though, all things considered. Yeah, definitely. He's a great guy. You know, you would never never think that he'd play in the NHL the way he's just a normal guy around us, and um, he's awesome to have. Like, he fits right into the room, so it's been awesome for us. Yeah, and I mean, we did. We left him hanging out to dry. I mean, how many odd, odd man rushes did we, you know, leave him to, to try and clean up for us? I mean, I think at one point they had a four-on-one, and they just tic-tac-toe in the back of the net, like, that doesn't do him any good, and uh, that's when you know we talked in the room that we needed to be better and do our own job and and figure out keep that F three high so that we they don't get that many odd man rushes. But uh, yeah, he's he's a fantastic guy, and you know we we have uh, all the confidence in the world in him for sure. Well, Solar Bears, as we said, have a, have their work cut out for them this week. Uh, four games in a five night stretch, a lot of travel. Uh, so I think probably Drake Barahowski, he's a big advocate of putting in the work when it's necessary, but also being a keen proponent of rest. I think you guys had yesterday off, if I'm not mistaken. So what's a a 20-something-year-old hockey player in Orlando to do on a day off? I got to ask, uh, Bertie, (laughs) you've spent some time already in the ECHL last year. You bounced between Reading, Wheeling, uh, and I think Greenville as well. Greenville probably would be my favorite of those three, but what's a guy guy to do in Orlando on an off day? Oh, man, it's unreal compared to last year, though. It was... uh... Yo, it was nice out yesterday, so a bunch of the guys usually go to the pool. I'm a big pool guy. Yeah, we're big we're, pool guys. Me and Coos actually both big pool guys. But yesterday, uh, me, Lebs, uh, Clint, and Boyder went golfing. Uh, we've been high on golfing lately, and we got a little little rivalry going, me and uh, Lebby versus uh, Boyder, and, uh, Boyder and Clint. So we took home yesterday's match, which is good. But, um, yeah, it's so nice here. Like, we usually go golf or go to the pool or whatever, like, yeah. and just go down to Winter Park, kind of hang around. And so it's nice, yeah. Definitely a lot of pool dates. I mean, I'll give him a text. He'll give me a text. And yeah. sometimes it's just him and I out there all day, and we'll just roast like lobsters. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't have a car here, so it's, you know, I'm kind of limited on what I can do. But uh, I love the pool, so I could sit out on a beach all day and just roast it. But, yeah, that's about what I do around here. Getting any yoga classes at the RDV? No, not a big yoga guy. I do some stretching at home, though, but uh, I haven't been to any classes, actually, at the RDV. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll I, work out, but not a class. I've guy. done a few of them. They're nice. Me and uh, Kooks usually go. So uh, get a little sweat on there, and that's really hard. Like, so many, like, I'm probably the worst person at yoga ever. Like, really bad, and I'm, it's almost, like, embarrassing. Like, I go in the back so nobody can see me. But, uh, yeah, so I, I'll, tr- I'll hit up the yoga class right now. And now, when you, when you go to those classes, do people recognize you or – um, sometimes, like if I'm wearing my soul bears here, that everyone comes out to us and talks and, they and make, stuff like that. They make the association. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, like if you're wearing soul bears here, everyone's gonna be asking you questions about the games and stuff like that. So w- any, I'm you've only had a few days since since the weekend, but I mean, especially after a game like Saturday, have people approach you on the street or oh, anything yeah. like that? Yeah, like today, like even today, like I had like probably five or six people come up to me and like, oh my God, that game was ridiculous and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool to see. And it was awesome. I was on TV too. So everyone would see it because people were saying how they were watching on TV. So that was unreal. Yeah. No, I, I haven't had anybody approach me, but uh, all my family members text me and a couple buddies because it was on TV, like you said, but uh, no, I haven't had anything like that. I just thought it was funny how, you know, that late in a game and it's 4-2 and um, you know, people want to beat the traffic, and you got a couple of people walking up the stairs already on their way out, and then we come. Biggest back. mistake of their life. Yeah, biggest huge, mistake ever. And they probably didn't get let back in, which is hilarious. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then we come out and, and win like that. So I bet you a couple of people are. They might stay next time. You never yeah. know. Well, hopefully, that's what we can encourage some people <laughs> yeah, to do. So exactly. uh, don't sleep on the bears. I think exactly. is that's the, right. Is that's the message. Say, yeah, that's hilarious. So beyond uh, the the days off, um, you know, it, it's. A lot to go around in Florida. There's a lot to do. Uh, have you guys had a chance to get to the beach yet or anything like that? You said you're a big pool guy, so any chance you check out any of the beaches yet? I haven't been yet. Like we, I think we like waited too long because now we're like we got 14 games this month, so we yeah. got to find a couple days off um, to get down there. Uh, so any recommendations would be good too. By the way, um, I heard Clearwater is pretty nice and stuff like that. So. Um, definitely trying to get down there when we have a few days. Yeah, I mean, it's been tough for me too. I've only been here since, I mean, November, but uh, I definitely want to get to a few. I've only done, 
I think Top Golf. I did Top Golf once. That was awesome. Um, I haven't gotten to any of the parks yet either. I'm kind of waiting for my family to come down to to get to those, but I definitely want to check everything off the bucket list here. I've never been to Disney or Universal or anything like that. What's a kid from Ontario to do? Have you ever actually been to like an actual beach on the ocean? <laughs> uh, yeah, where I went to school was was on the ocean in, in Halifax, but I mean, it's not. It doesn't get as hot there as it does here. So I can't imagine. Not even close. So. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, I mean, I've been to to Barcelona, so I got on the beach in in Spain there. But uh, yeah, no, I, I heard Florida's incredible. So just a little vacation to to Spain, or uh, no? I played in the world uh, World Cup of roller hockey there. Uh, really? This past summer, yeah. So I played for Team Canada. Um, next year or this summer coming in July, the games are in Colombia. I'll go to those too. So oh, wow. yeah, so I've been playing roller since since I was like nine years old. I actually used to come and play in uh, in the arena where the Everblades play and uh, I used to come down there for the North American Championships all the time. So I've been down here before, but again, never got to any of the beaches. So so did you start in roller first or, and then transition to ice? Or did, no, was I, it... did, I did ice first. Um, I actually played ice in the winter, summer. I played lacrosse and I just hated doing wind sprints in, in the summer in lacrosse. <laughs> I was not about that. So I kind of stumbled on to roller, and then uh, I stuck with it ever since. I love it. Any other uh, high-profile guys on the Canadian team that, that ECHL fans might recognize? Uh, no. No, we have only one other guy who plays um, pro ice hockey. He plays in the, um, the English League, the EIHL, and uh, that was about it, just, just him and I. Um, I don't even know if the Americans have, have any pro guys that I – I don't think so. The only guy I know, so when I worked for a team out in California, we had uh, Troy Redmond, who was like apparently the all-time best roller hockey goaltender out of the United States, and he, I guess, played junior in the, for the Columbus Junior Blue Jackets, I think, mm-hmm. right. uh, in the USHL, uh, but used sparingly in, in ice, but he came in and stole some games for us, and you could tell like definitely where a lot of the the – the reflexes come from the roller game as opposed to to the ice. Yeah, and the roller game is completely different than for a goaltender than it is ice. You can't slide across like you would in ice, and so they kind of gotta tweak their game a little bit. Even for uh, for players, skating's a lot different. You can't stop the same way and things like that. It's just a completely different game, honestly. It's four on four, no offsides, no icing. So the game's just all skill and all speed and. I mean, I love it. If it, if it paid the same way ice did, <laughs> I think that I'd play roller over ice, but. What about you? You ever get into the roller uh, hockey? Or? Not like this, but it sounds like unbelievable. I've always wanted to, but because I always see it, I think it's like big out in California. Yeah, it's, but huge, it's not like huge, it's not like huge. that big out here. Like I play in my backyard and stuff like that, but nothing like nothing like this. You just grew up going to the garden. Just going to the garden. Just yeah. going to the garden. <laughs> Fenway Franks at the bar park. Huh? <laughs> so beyond all the stuff that there is to do, the one thing that I've actually I've been here. This is my fifth year in Orlando. I've never been to Daytona. Uh, through the beach, but more specifically, timeliness, the the raceway. And yeah. obviously, yesterday was the Daytona 500. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of a lot of drama at the end, from uh, from what I saw. And certainly, it's uh, probably a good thing. I don't know if you guys have yeah, been following that, along. Yeah, but yeah that's crazy. With uh, Ryan Newman, I mean, it, I don't get how he survived that. But yeah, that was that was pretty scary. Someone was definitely watching over him that night. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, we were talking about it today. And we were kind of disappointed because the race was yesterday. We had the day off, but it was it was rain delayed, so it would have been on uh, Sunday originally. Sunday. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it would have been awesome to go to, but yeah, that's scary, especially on the last lap. You know, and um, you hate to see something like that. And we were just talking, you know, what's different? You know, anybody in a regular car, obviously, they're not built the way the, the NASCAR cars are, but there's no chance that you're surviving that crash. But thankfully, he is, and he's in. Not great condition, but he's alive, so that's great. All right. So, I mean, with, with all that said, I mean, what 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 do you guys know of NASCAR? My experience is, is none, none. I, I lived in California. They have drag racing out there. It's it's big. I, I I never quite understood, okay, you're just going in a straight line. It's literally half a mile just down a road. Okay, great. But at least with NASCAR, there's some strategy to it, it <laughs> yeah. seems. I literally have zero experience. Like, I don't know anything. My grandmother is a huge NASCAR fan. <laughs> so I grew up watching NASCAR with her. My favorite driver was Jeff Gordon. Um, I used to have all the Hot Wheels cars and just zip those around her, her living room floor. But, yeah, no, it's fun. And, you know, I 
it was something that I would never have been into unless she was. And her and I would just watch races and, and cheer for Jeff. And we wouldn't drink Coke because Jeff had the Pepsi car. And <laughs> that was was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it was just things like that. So I know she was watching yesterday, but, yeah, it was fond memories for well, sure. So it, your grandmother, I'm assuming she's Canadian as well. So are there? She's can- actually American. Really? But, yeah. Okay. So, so I- she's dual. So she's, uh, I think she's from... Her father was from New York, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, yeah, she just grew up loving NASCAR, I guess. So my grandpa and her would always would always go to races, and they've been to Daytona. And, yeah, so she's she's checked a lot of things off the bucket list in her time for sure. So, Well, uh, that's, that's, that's not – I guess that would make sense, though. If you're, if you're from Ontario, that would make sense that your grandmother would be from New York if she's from the States. Yeah, that's relatively, yeah it's relatively close. So I think what happened was they moved – to um near ottawa ontario and then uh my my grandfather was from kingston they're really close to each Mm -hmm. other so um yeah they just met and that's that's that it's history Right on. Well, I think uh, that's probably as good a time as any to, to wrap up this latest episode of the Orlando Solar Bears podcast. Uh, Solar Bears heading out this week, as we said, uh, Wednesday down in Estero, uh, Friday uh, taking on Atlanta, then Jacksonville Saturday returning home to take on the Admirals on Sunday. Uh, should be a busy week. I mean, before we, we conclude things, I mean, what are you guys uh, anticipating out of these four games over this five-day stretch coming up? Uh, hopefully four wins. But uh, it's going to be... Keep it uh, going. Yeah, it'll just keep it going. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be a grind. We know it. A lot of travel, and we just got to keep playing simple, um, playing the right way, and uh, things should take care of themselves. Yeah, no, the four wins is the goal for sure. Um, Just take advantage of the recovery time. There's not a lot of it, so, I mean... It's going to be a lot of naps this week, I think. And a lot of hours on the bus. Yeah, a lot, a lot of, of hours on the, bus. on the bus, a lot of waters. Rookies of, bring movies. Make yeah. sure you do that. But, um, yeah, it's going to be a grind. Yeah, no, it's definitely going to be a tough one with all that. I think we got like a 10-hour bus right after um, the game in uh, in Florida. So, yeah, going to have to learn how to sleep on the bus for this trip for sure. Oh yeah. Well, uh, we've got we've got some time to figure that all out, and uh, we're using a new hotel though in Atlanta this this uh, time. Yeah, told me about this. Yeah. I haven't heard about so, yeah. that last one. Looked like it was still being built. I, don't I, know I what's think going it's on. still that one was still under renovations, but we're 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 using a different hotel for this trip. So hopefully things go well. We're using it as a test for next year. Okay, all right. Ta- they'll, they, <laughs> it sounds like they're going to take care of us. So uh, and Perfect. it's going to be right to, next to a bunch of restaurants. G- chance for you guys to eat, there relax. You know. Breakfast and included or breakfast included. Wow, Let's make yeah. sure of that. That's huge because yeah. the guy at the last hotel that was serving us breakfast, worst, he though. loved to yell at eight in the morning. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he did. <laughs> Wake up out of the elevators. Hey, can I get you a coffee? Mm-hmm. Like, dude. You gotta yeah. calm it down. <laughs> oh yeah, no, they're gonna take care of us. So yeah. looking forward to that. So perfect. Uh, but in any case, that'll do it for the latest episode of the Orlando Solar Bears podcast. For Tyler Bird and Jay Kugler, I'm Jesse Lehman. Uh, be sure to visit uh, clickorlando.com. Check out the latest episode. We'll see you at Sunday as the Solar Bears take on the Norfolk Admirals for 3 p.m.